Hello, it's uh, Real World Boating again. Terry back. I'm going to talk about uh, battery selection a little bit because I'm going through that with getting the uh, uh, stuff together to actually uh, build that battery for that 500 amp bow thruster that I've talked about in the previous videos. Um, if you, have, you don't know if this is the first one you're watching. Um, there's a boat that's a few slips away from this boat. You're on laissez-faire. Um, my boat, um, there's a boat Dunvegan. It's a 50 foot far, um, just a few slips, slips away. And uh, I'm going to build a battery to run its 500 amp bow thruster um, because he purchased lithium batteries and it didn't actually, um, it didn't work uh, for the bow thruster. Um, and he was thinking that they were just going to be uh, uh, lead acid replacements, uh, drop in replacements, and it doesn't work that way. So, uh, just battery selection. Here is a uh, brand new battery that I got from eBay. Um, it is a uh, 100 amp hour 12 volt battery, uh, and it's really light. Um, it only weighs like maybe 20 pounds. It's really light. And I suspect that inside of this is a BMS, a battery management system uh, circuit card, or I went over in the last video uh, a few different BMSs. Um, so inside of this is a BMS, a battery management system uh, circuit card. And I suspect this is uh, probably um, individual lithium uh, ion cells inside, probably like. Uh, like what you put in a battery almost uh, on the side, on the order of like uh, uh, double A cells or maybe uh, C. Um, they have larger ones that are about the size of D cells um, of regular flashlight batteries. Um, so something on the order of that. I don't know exactly which size of course, size of course, unless I tear it apart, and I didn't want to do that. Um, and so. This is a rated at, uh, it's actually fairly low. The, the maximum charging capacity is 40 amps. Uh, the continuous discharge rate is uh, uh, recommended is 40 amps, but it can do 80 amp discharge rate, um, but it's not uh, recommended. And uh, I think that's probably at the limit of the BMS probably is the 80 amp discharge rate. I did do a, uh, because it was so light, I did a uh, output test of it, test on it, just to make sure that it was indeed 100 amp hours, and it did go up over 100 amp hours. Um, I did a really low, uh, a slow um, amp discharge. It was on, on the order of about four or five amps uh, discharge, so it took a long time overnight, um, probably getting close to a full day to get to the. Uh, whole uh, 100 and about 110 amps before it shut off. Um, it, you can't charge this battery up like over it, it stops it's fully charged at about 12.7 uh, volts 12.6 volts that's fully charged on this one and that's typical of the uh, those uh, small like uh, rechargeable uh, um, like flashlight lithium ion flashlight batteries like the double A's, but of course, lithium ion and rechargeable also. So that's probably what's inside this. Um, so this is a, a pretty well-known brand that I got also. Um, it's a valence battery. Um, and this definitely has the, the same style of batteries uh, uh, inside as this last one. So this, uh, this valence battery. Um, this is, like I said, a 100 amp hour 12 volt battery. This is also a 12 volt battery, but it is a 40 amp hour. Um, and it actually goes up to about 14.6 volts um, when it's fully charged. So it does probably have like uh, the, um, the larger cells that are more like a D cell battery. Um, not quite as big around. Um, um, probably has one of those uh, or a bunch of those that are inside this. This is fairly light also but it is uh, this one right here is getting close to probably not quite as heavy as this one but almost um, and so which is was really shocking how, how light this one was um, and the fact that I did get a hundred amp hour uh, 
100 amp hours out of it, or actually over. It was like 110 amp hours that it got out of this. So it uh, it is it is what it says. Um, uh, I, I'll put a link to uh, both these uh, batteries that I got. Um, and uh, these ones are super expensive batteries, brand new. This one did get used. It was like supposed to be just slightly used. So uh, I did uh, spend... Uh, about $250 on this because it was supposed to be just uh, only cycled a few times and uh, so uh, I did do a capacity test on this it did do o over the 40 amp hours so it definitely uh, does work uh, as advertised um, and uh, I, d I do feel like it just looks brand new too uh, it doesn't look like it was ever in anything but um, and they said uh, the person selling it on eBay said that uh, it would it was just used slightly for some testing purposes, um, probably doing similar stuff to what I'm doing. Uh, but anyways, um, it was a uh, it was a uh, this is a super high end. I've seen uh, tear parts where they have a really good BMS, um, and they do have a communication systems where you can daisy chain these together um, and get large banks. Uh, oftentimes these are used for uh, medical equipment. Um, different facilities use these really high-end batteries uh, when they, they really need a good guaranteed product. They'll, they'll, they'll spend the extra money to get something with a really good brand and a really good warranty and that type of thing. Um, it's not necessary to spend that much money, but I definitely understand if something that you have to have really good and are not interested in taking the time and building it yourself and learning about that. So anyways, the valence batteries are, are, are pretty well known, uh, and like I said, brand new, like super expensive. This 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 battery alone, if it were purchased brand new, brand new, is probably on the uh, $800 range for the 40 amp hour ones. I know that the uh, the 100 amp hour ones that they do have uh, for the valence brand new are on the order of about $1,500 for those. So they're they're really high end, expensive batteries. <clears throat> so. Uh, couple more things that I got going. Um, one is this uh, Nissan Leaf battery that I got. Um, this is one of the cells um, in a, if you were to purchase a Nissan Leaf, um, at least the used ones, I don't know about the brand new ones, but uh, they would have a cell, uh, a bunch of cells actually like this that, that run that electric car. Um, <clears throat> this is a, uh, I was considering using these for the test, and that's why I got some of them to do some initial testing uh, to see how they work. This is a 64 amp hour uh, cell, um, but only 7.7 .7 volts uh, nominal. And so uh, you need two of them essentially to make a 12 volt battery, uh, 64 amp hour uh, 12 volt battery. Um, but then uh, uh, it's a pretty good value. I got them at batteryhookup.com and uh, I was looking at these for doing it. The continuous discharge of this is 240 amps continuous with a peak to 540 amps. Uh, can, uh, just a peak discharge for like 30 seconds or less than that actually probably. Um, and so uh, it's they're pretty good, they're pretty solid, they're kind of heavy though for what you're getting. So uh, I did get a, these other batteries here from Battery Hookup. Now these uh, 16 batteries there's uh, would have the same amount as one. So essentially what's inside this, I believe there's only four of, of these inside here, but all these 16 smaller ones would make pretty much exactly one of these here as far as the uh, the voltage and the uh, capacity of the battery in amp hours so if I put these all together in series and parallel um, I could make a, uh, a battery just like this uh, it would be um, about 7.7 .7 volts and 64 amp hour capacity now these little ones right here, they have a 200 amp continuous discharge rate. Um, pretty impressive. And they're really versatile. They're only eight amp hours a piece. Um, and they're uh, 3.7 volts nominal 
for each one of these. So uh, I like the versatility in them. Um, as far as the, the price per amp hour is concerned and the voltage, these are actually cheaper um, if you wanted to go that way. Uh, these are both used batteries that I got from a battery hookup.com. Um, this is not sponsored at all, just so you know. I, uh, I bought it uh, from batteryhookup.com just like you could if you wanted to go there. This is for my testing purposes, so nothing in this video is sponsored at all. Uh, but I will put some links so you can find this stuff very easily. Um, I do recommend, if you're interested in batteries, going to batteryhookup.com. It's a good source, uh, a good site. Uh, I've used them a few times already, um, and they seem like a, a really good company. Uh, <clears throat> so anyways, I happened to get one that had the specs right on it. So uh, 3.6 uh, volts uh, is the cell, and that's a nominal voltage. It, it'll, you could be able to charge this up to probably around... 4.2-ish, uh, maybe 4.4 at the high end, and 8 amp hours uh, for each one. So it did, this one out of a bunch of them uh, uh, had the actual uh, spec sheet, or the specs for the battery cells themselves. Um, a lot, most of them do not have that at all. I just got lucky and got one that had that sticker on it uh, from whenever they took apart and uh, to testing on them before they sold them off. They are used batteries, uh, but they're supposed to be still have 90% of the capacity left on them, uh, and they do do testing at, at Battery Hookup, and they have a really good reputation online. So, anyways, this right here, uh, like I said, could create this, but I could also, you know, these batteries, I could uh, take four of them and make a 12 volt battery, uh, but it would only be eight amp. There are eight amp arrows per cell, so um, 3.7 times 4, uh, I can make a 12 volt battery out of four of these, um, out of uh, <coughs> eight of them of course I could make a 24 volt batteries, but since you're just adding them all together in series, it's still only 8 amp hour capacity, right? Um, if you separated them out and did two each and tried to get the most capacity. Again, this is seven point uh, set or seven point three point six times two, so um, uh, seven point two amp hours um, or seven point two volts rather. Um, but still, uh, but then uh, when you do, if I were to connect them in parallel, then you can add the amp arrows together. So. Uh, if I made a 12 volt battery example, it would be 12 um, with 8 amp hours and another 12 with 16 amp hours and another 12 volt battery with uh, uh, 30, 24 amp hours geez. Uh, and then uh, a fourth one with 32 amp hours, so 8 times 4. Uh, and so on and on and on. Um, so the, uh, the reason why I spent a little bit more than, than just getting the uh, Nissan Leaf batteries here um, was that these are more versatile and I don't have a 24 volt system. I have a 12 volt system on my boat. And so when this all gets said and done, um, Ben doesn't, I'm not selling him a battery. I'm not building it for him. I'm just doing proof of concept here. Um, so I just wanted to show uh, you guys my thinking and document it about what I was going through in my head about the process of cell selection and what I was going to use to build um, the battery itself. So I just got another package of these. Uh, I got my initial package when I first got it for testing purposes and then check them out. Um, so I got my second package from Battery Hookup and I'll be building that here shortly. Uh, hopefully in a week or two I'll have the final video of testing the bow thruster. Um, and we'll, then we'll move on to other boat things. I don't want to just do uh, videos about batteries. Uh, this is just because uh, uh, it was the initial, the initial thing and I wanted to get this all uh, documented as far as my process and what I'm thinking of and actually do the test. And I looked at videos and I couldn't see a bunch of stuff, specifically for boats, 
out there in the world. And so that's the reason why I started doing these videos in the first place. It was because of Ben and his bath duster issue and the fact that I think I'm out doing it. And so it was the impetus to start this. And when I looked online, there wasn't videos specifically. There's a lot of battery videos out there, uh, quite a few actually. And so a lot of this information that I'm giving is redundant. Uh, you can find uh, people that are more attractive and more eloquent speakers out there giving a lot of the same information. But um, this is... Uh, this is something that uh, in the boaters world haven't gone up. Uh, a lot of people haven't swapped over from lead acid to lithium in the boating world. Um, somehow, for sure. Um, it's definitely a trend that's happening. And uh, it's more and more people are going to the lithium. Um, just because of the, the amount of time that uh, these lithium ion batteries or lithium uh, iron phosphate batteries, which is something that I will probably go with um, more so is a lithium iron phosphate battery just because of solar they seem to be really good for solar um, and uh, there's there's not a huge difference between the lithium ion and uh, lithium iron phosphate the lithium, lithium iron phosphate are considered to be a much safer battery um, so I'll eventually go with that um, than the lithium ion batteries but there's, they've been around for actually a really long time. The Nissan Leafs that have them in them, even though they get in car wrecks and things like that, I assure you Nissan Leafs have got in, in car wrecks. Um, they don't explode or blow up or catch on fire uh, or anything like that. So uh, it's something that, that is pretty well known as far as the technology goes. And like I said, essentially what's inside here are these. They're different shape and have a different amperage, but inside of here are essentially these exact same things um, inside there. So I uh, hope that uh, clears some things up and helps people make the decisions. And thanks for watching. Bye.